quickly hit New Cambridge. He says, put a moon collar on. Everyone made fun of that. Holding aside his separate comment, but which they juxtaposed to make it look like they were spoken together. Holding aside his separate comment, they want to put 13,000 Americans on the moon and then have America annex the moon as a state. Okay? Let's hold that aside and just address the moon colony. So, uh, really? You want to separate those two? <laughs> so, I was interviewed on MSNBC and I reacted to his statement. Interesting response if you look at the blogosphere. The conservative blogosphere said, Tyson <coughs> said, conservative blogosphere said, Tyson sympathizes with Gingrich's moon base. If you look at the liberal blogosphere, it said, Tyson shoots down the Gingrich moon base. So what that meant was people have their filter. And they, when I'm just analyzing something, they have to say that I'm one extreme or the other, even wow. when I'm not. The point is, we've already been to the moon, and so for anyone to say, let's have a moon base in eight years, that's not more of a stretch than President Kennedy in 1961, when we didn't yet have a vehicle that wouldn't kill an American going into orbit. Russia had one, we didn't have one yet. He says, let's put a man on the moon before the decade is out. In those eight years, we go from no vehicle to human footprints. All Gingrich is saying, we've been in the moon, let's go back and set up a colony. That's not even a stretch. But the anti- it's something I can do. <laughs> <laughs> President Kennedy had 2012. <laughs> so there were anti-Gingrich people that had to say something bad about it. Because when you're anti a candidate, nothing they can say will be anything you agree with. That's the polarized environment in which we find ourselves. So, I can tell you that getting back to Obama, he gave a speech, he gave a speech, in my next book, which comes out in two weeks, the original title that I submitted to the publisher was Failure to Launch the Dreams and Delusions of Space Enthusiasts. The publisher said, that's too depressing, we can't have a title with the word failure in it. So it got changed to Space Chronicles. Space Chronicles. The movie failure launched. Got changed to Space Chronicles. In there, I, the, the opening chapter is called Space Politics. Obama, for his State of the Union address last year, opens with an analogy to Sputnik in 1957 and says, We have a new Sputnik moment. There are rising economic challenges around the world. And back in the 60s, we rose to that, uh, to, to that challenge. And we went to the moon just as we said we would, and it, it birthed an entire generation of microelectronics and economies that enabled America to leave the world. So he then said, by the year 2025 and 2030, and it's a list of things in the current Sputnik moment that he wants to accomplish. Go back and read that list. You know what it says? It says we should have high speed rail for 90% of people. We should have internet for, and, I, and I'm thinking, we should have that anyway. Yeah, you, you're going to use a Sputnik analogy and then say, let's have high speed rail? But if you're going to dream, give me a real dream here, okay? Our bag left trains on it. Entire system. 
system by which the nation has attempted to bring itself back into space. And I assert that a manned mission to Mars, if someone had the balls, 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 <laughs> something, someone had the gonads, we can be neutral here. <laughs> uh, if someone had, if you did that and said, I want to go to Mars, and here's the budget for it, and we're going to go as fast as we can. On a high-speed rail. <laughs> the people who will go to that astronaut class today are in middle school. You select them now. You pick the ones who are eating well and who are getting good grades. Team B, you yeah. write about them. Let's send a bunch of 12 year olds. <laughs> we don't eat too much pizza in space. Think you are sending the ones that are annoying. Team B. Because we need the best engineers, the best biologists, the best chemists. They will rise up to accomplish this mission because we're advancing a frontier. Unlike the shuttle, which only went where hundreds had gone before. When you actually advance a frontier, it transforms the culture in which that is engaged in that activity. And that transformation reestablishes something that existed 50 years ago but does not exist today. And that is the valuation what it is to be scientifically literate in America. We currently live at a time when science is, 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 is discarded as something that's just an unnecessary luxury, when in fact it is the very science literacy that breeds innovation in science and technology that are the engines of tomorrow economy, tomorrow's economy. So I submit to you that a fully funded Mars mission will be the greatest investment we have in the health of our economy that we could possibly make. And on a half a penny on a dollar, I say double it to a penny on a dollar. That would be NASA's budget. That would be enough to get us to Mars fast. So people say, well, why are we spending money up there and not down here? You've heard that. You know, you know how much money we're spending down here? I'll tell you. Add up all the social programs and what we spend on education, it is 50 times the NASA budget. So you want to zero the NASA's budget and hand it to a budget that's 50 times as large and then assert that that's somehow going to make a difference? I don't think so. And so my point is, my point is we forgot how to dream. We used to dream back in the 60s and 70s. The city of tomorrow. The homes of tomorrow. Transportation of tomorrow. That's what the whole point of the World's Fairs were. When was the last time you even heard of a world fair? We stopped dreaming. That, that entire period coincided with our voyage to the moon. That entire period. There's a correspondence between dreaming big as, an, as a nation and dreaming about bringing tomorrow into the present. So this entire book is about that. And it's an old man. And I was in the White House, okay, just a couple of weeks ago. Obama, right there. And I'm you yelling about science. <laughs> Thank you.